Happy holidays, everyone, and welcome to the second devlog about a little voxel engine I've been working on. Over the past two months, I've made a couple of changes that I am super excited to talk about, and we also have an announcement that I am excited to make, which we'll get to at the end of the video. So, the first big improvement on the list is performance. Originally, when we got it working, it was rendering it at around 30 milliseconds per frame. Which, since the goal is to be able to render real-time path tracing, this would not work. After a couple of optimizations, though, I managed to get the frame times down to anywhere from a quarter of milliseconds to two milliseconds per frame for path-traced images. Now, that was in the very, very best of scenes. In most scenes, it was rendering it at around real-time 60 FPS-ish, 16 milliseconds or so, which is very, very good, but there are still improvements that need to be made. And we'll get to some of those path trace clips here in a second. Let's talk about one more thing though. This next thing that I added is the voxel type data system. This is a way to generate data for each voxel and store the data for each voxel in a very, very efficient way to search through it. Now, when I first implemented this, that last part about it being efficient was very much not true. We were getting anywhere from 200 to 300 milliseconds per frame, having to sort through it and search through every single voxel in the scene. After some really cool optimizations, such as implementing a binary search and sorting the entire list based off of the voxel's positions, we were able to get this down to well under a millisecond, which greatly improves the performance and makes real-time path tracing a lot more viable. So I've talked about it quite a bit, now let's look at it. These wonderful path traced images and videos that I have made over the past two months. <laughs> Super cool, I am so proud of those videos. Now the final big change to the code that was not part of the render is a change to the generator that I made. The generator originally was using the scd sort function multiple times per octree generation. This meant that for larger octrees, such as 1024 cubic volumes, it was taking all the way up to a couple of minutes to generate. However, after figuring out how to optimize this and remove that sort function, we got it down to just a couple of milliseconds, even for these really, really large scenes. Now, the biggest downside and the biggest thing that we're gonna have to improve is the actual file sizes. Currently, the octree structure, which is the one that actually is responsible for storing the geometry of the scene, takes up only a couple of megabytes, whereas the voxel type data structure takes all the way up to a couple of gigabytes in a few scenes. Can you tell which one was developed by the professionals, which one was by me? Well, I'm sure you can. Mine is the one that takes a few gigabytes. Now, time for the big announcement. Over the past couple of weeks of working on this, I have started restructuring it, figuring out how I want to structure the project. That way, I can finally open source this and we can all work on it together. I should have that up in a couple of weeks, and if you watched the first one, you'll know that my estimate wasn't quite right, about a month. It has now been twice that, but 
I have a much better feeling about this one as I am already well on my way to restructuring it all and working on the GitHub repository. So I hope you've enjoyed and I can't wait for you all to join me and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.